Okay. So can one group uh, volunteer to give me their, their service dimension to providing microwaves? Uh, we think uh, we should be able to, to add uh, recipes into your microwave so you Wi-Fi. You would have control your microwave through your computer. Okay. And, and how do you get revenue from that? How do you make money? You would sell them the recipes. You sell them the recipes. Okay. It's pretty good. And which target uh, market sector would you target? Do you know who you'd like to sell it to specifically? Desperate housewives. Desperate housewives. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Uh, this guy here, we haven't heard from you. Yes, we, um, we had an idea to make a food delivery service so that you maybe once a week can get uh, some uh, frozen food that you could put directly into the microwave oven. Okay, that's good service um, related to the product. Go ahead. I made an idea about the yeah, back group. Made an idea about um, bringing them to the campus, and uh, we have some in some of the buildings, but they are really uh, nasty. So that they offer this service that they will place one really cheap, and they will come and clean it. But every time you use it, you maybe put in your card, just like the coffee machine, yeah. so that it would be just a, a service way of uh, using the machine. That's um, great, and also. Just like he said, but maybe install it together with a place where it, it, it just plays, press, and then uh, they will put down some food and it will heat it. So okay, I didn't quite follow the last bit, but the, the first two points of paying per use is the service uh, dimension to it, and also providing uh, cleaning and maintenance of the uh, microwave, really useful, and the market sector of communal areas. That probably isn't going to work for households, but for university microwaves, that might work. Um, you could imagine that happening. Get at the back. Sorry, I'll come to you next. Yes, uh, we thought about uh, making a spin up of the espresso system. Okay. And then create a, a special, not a special, it wouldn't be special, but a special microwave to, to fit uh, like a special tray, yeah. which, you, which you buy ready made food, but a high quality, much higher quality than regular. And then it should have a built-in QR scanner, like the code you scan with your cell phone. So it will, you just put in your food, and it will be designed so it just has a snuggly fit. You press one button, and then you have your meal ready to eat. And it should be, of course, high quality, so you can tell that a high quality microwave is comparable. But you know, it should be easy food, it should be fairly healthy. And we, I think one of the targets would be singles in Copenhagen. And then the revenue will of course, be from the food and the machine itself. That's so, amazing. So that's yeah. I'm not sure you can yeah. imagine like, the blind community having a, uh, a microwave meal which is programmed in the cooking time from the start. You just put it in, beep, take it out, eat it. I think it's a neat idea. It's good, is it? Yeah. I, oh, the, I, the problem with there is, and with this idea here, you have to start up that complete separate business on the food production and packaging side. Um, but still, good, good service dimensions. This guy here. Uh, yeah, we would sort of transition into uh, industrial microwaves. Uh, it's, it's like the big franchises all have frozen, frozen onion, frozen lettuce, frozen tomatoes, so on, frozen, frozen beef. Then we would provide uh, microwave hours. So we would sell them an amount of hours where this microwave, this microwave is functional. We would provide cleaning, uh, rep like repairs, everything. And the thing is, the then the company would benefit from when you when you make an investment now in a machine, it loses value. But if you have an investment in in hours, it won't lose value in the same way because you will know you have this amount of microwave hours. Yeah. And we would and you would be able to benefit from that, so you don't have to sort of make a risky investment in a big industrial microwave, you just have an investment. And we have so this many hours of microwave, and then we know when, when they're done, we buy a new one. Excellent. That's a very good point. So that's the power by hour model for microwaves. Uh, really good idea. And touched on a very important point, that the customers don't experience depletion of the value of the product they're having, because they, they never own it. So they're just paying for the service. We all buy products, and the value depletes straight away until it breaks, and then you have to buy a new one. Um, that's quite 
it doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you have to manage the, the technology amongst the whole campus or organization to make sure you've always got revenue put aside for your depleting technologies, a, a bit of a faff that you don't necessarily need. Okay. Do you want, do you want to take one more? Uh, I'll just say that it, it will also be profitable for the producer to actually make a good product. Because the better your product, the more money you'll make where earlier on, the other model, you, you'd actually lose money if the product was too good because you could sell more. Yeah, I'm so glad someone said that. That's, lots of people have PSS as synonymous with eco-design. They see it as an eco-design strategy because for exactly this reason, it will encourage suppliers to make very robust, durable microwaves. And instead of throwing them away as soon as they break, to make sure they're maintained and kept, uh, kept user ready constantly. So in a way, the whole business model is set up to be more uh, econo um, environmentally sustainable. Okay, I best move on. Um, so here's a... Um, a bit of literature proposed by uh, Tucker and Tishner, um, looking at uh, products, use and results and tipping the scale from uh, product orientated to service. Um, and that was further distilled down into this uh, framework here saying that there are, on the continuum from product to service, there are five increments. So we can either have a pure product that we sell, we can have a product orientated with a small amount of service so we have a product-related service, as in maintenance, um, or consultancy on which product is most suitable for you to buy. Then we have the use-orientated, which is a strategy, maybe product leasing. So there is no transfer um, of ownership. The, the person who makes the, uh, the product still owns it towards the end. Product renting and sharing, product pooling, so that's things such as shared transport systems um, and paper service units, power by hour sort of thing. Then on the very service uh, orientated PSS systems, we have things like activity management um, and functional units and then finally pure service. Um, so of course some, some services don't have a product related to them, it's just a service. For example, having your hair cut. Now, a nice way to visualize this and, and start thinking about how to um, reconceptualize your design and business model is to look at the product life cycle, which we looked at a moment ago, but also consider uh, the user activity cycle. Um, so at some point, the product will be in use by the user. And at every stage of that user's activity engaging with the product, there will be an opportunity to provide a service. So if you break down your, your product into this kind of framework, you all, all of a sudden notice all the opportunities to provide service and get extra revenue. So if you think about that in terms of the EasyJet model, um, they provided a service at the sales point, um, then the person will check in online, which they provide a, a, a special check-in service on the user activity cycle. Uh, they then have to board, uh, queue up to board. So maybe they provide speedy boarding uh, facility. Then you get on the plane and they need refreshments. So they'll uh, provide refreshments and so on and so on. But most of the points on this um, cycle, uh, EasyJet tried to provide a service for. So you get out on the other side, you need a car, EasyJet car rental. You then go from the car to your hotel, EasyJet hotel and so on. So they basically map out the user activity cycle and the product life cycle and think, where on these points can we get extra revenue and provide service? So when you're applying this product service style thinking to your products, it might be worth trying to map out this type of framework and seeing where you can provide services for. This is the onion skin model, uh, showing the layers of service added onto a product. So first of all, we might have uh, product use service, as in maintenance repair, and the, the methodology here would be designed for serviceability. In other words, it's quick and easy and efficient to service. Um, then product life services, such as supplies, installation, 
the Xerox style model. Um, and that might be designed for supportability. Um, and then we have the customer activities, which is what we looked at in the previous model. And finally, business support services. This is just a, a slightly nicer visualization. Um, okay. I think this is uh, the concluding slide now. Um, so designing a PSS, um, we need to adopt new approaches to making substantial changes for the end user um, in terms of its new patterns of usage and the product's life cycle. Uh, we need to produce uh, we need to produce PSS for the company producing the product uh, in terms of maintaining uh, contact uh, with the customer, supply, maintenance, upgrade, and disposal, the utilization of the product, uh, realizing new ownership patterns, and to identify markets uh, with a greater share by redefining their core business strategies. And then how PSS may be useful for society, well, we've, we've already had one nice example of how it may be more environmentally sustainable uh, by producing uh, increased product efficiency, but also a closer relationship with the customers and societal needs. So in summary, uh, PSS can be an effective way to bring suppliers closer to customers while responding more to the customer's real needs. Services should be integrated in design of products uh, where valuable. Do you have any questions, for PSS? I have a short note. Go ahead. I think I just want to add something because uh, 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 I just I'm just going to take a you know a cynical economical standpoint now and look at this from you know a financial from an investor standpoint, for instance. Um, obviously, by adapting your service to the customers' actual needs, no one actually wants. You know, from an industrial standpoint, on a microwave, they want the service. So that's 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 a good part there, and that'll also enable you probably to charge a little bit more. So over the the life cycle of the product, you will be able to earn more, let's say, per product than you would have if you just sold the product. So that that of course is a good argument, but when you talk to an investor and in financial planning, you have to think about two things. You have to think about how much does it cost, how much can we sell it for, and also when are we getting when are we getting the money. Because at an early point, if you're starting a company here, if you're going to the market saying that from day one, we're not even going to sell our product, we're going to provide a service, the investor will be like, that's a great idea. We can see you can earn a lot of money on this, but you'll still have to build the products. That's going to cost you something. Mm -hmm. So you often see companies who have an ambition of going into a PSS model, but the initial products, uh, they're not providing through the PSS, but as a product itself, because it's essentially about you know, getting some money in your company from the, the beginning, and then you can start building on more sophisticated models. So you have to think about that uh, with your own ideas, because uh, it'll probably be like a, a graduation from you know, starting with just ordinary sales and you know, getting some money in the bank, and then you can start rolling out mm -hmm. uh, more advanced models like this and actually earning more money per product, product you produce. So I think that's a very important note you, you uh, need to bear in mind as well. No, I'd agree. And, and if, you, if you saw most of the cases presented were successful cases of moving from a product orientated to service orientated. So it kind of fit, fits OK with Jacob's uh, point there. Because they already had the revenue and the products generated, then they could transfer to service. Could they have gone straight to a PSS model? Maybe, maybe it would have been and, more difficult. And also, just to criticize, criticize my own point, <laughs> you could do both. You mm. could, as I think you uh, summarized the Rolls-Royce case, so you're more the expert than I am, but they actually sell the engine as well, or do they only sell the power hours? Okay. Power by hour. So yeah. if you had a case where you could actually you know, sell the engine and you know, provide, a, provide a very extensive service so as to you know, mitigate some of the risk, take, uh, put the risk on the customer's part as well, so it's not only you who have to spend a lot of money. That would also be a way of going That's about it. That's a good it. point. Sort of yeah. stepping stone. Yeah, exactly. Model. Could this one work for the PSS model as well? For high tech products. So if you're in a small microwave in different shops, mm -hmm. like the label, it's going to cost the system to service these things. Will it only work for high tech models, did you say? Uh, well, we saw the example for the, uh, the organic food 
uh, PSS, just providing a delivery service for organic food, uh, painting cars rather than selling paint. Um, I actually don't think, I don't think it's necessary for it to be high tech. The only thing is, if it's not high tech, then lots of other customers can provide the same service as you. There needs to be some reason why you can provide it and others can't. Go at the back. I also think, uh, just to comment on that, uh, what you just said, Thomas, um, uh, on the um, on the service part of it, because uh, when you have a product that's essentially pretty, you know, something that could be replicated. For instance, let, let's take the Danfoss case. They're very good at what they do, but you know, to some extent, someone else could probably make a pump that's maybe up to, you know. 90 or 95 percent the efficiency of a Danfoss point pump, and then produce it somewhere, you know, in the east or whatever. Uh, the Proteus project that Tim McAloon, who's behind a lot of these models you're looking at, is uh, essentially about looking into the maritime sector and seeing, okay, the, they have these uh, products they're providing, but you know they're also being provided in China or in India, and they can't really compete on price. But what they do have in Denmark is knowledge. They have, you know trained personnel, they can provide this as a service, a product service instead of just a product. Mm. And that also enables them to compete. So in some cases, actually, the product service approach is an advantage if the product is not in itself very high tech. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually leverage the uh, knowledge of, well, uh, your company or your staff uh, and, and provide, provide a new and stronger product that uh, and your, co your, your competition would be able to do. So. That's a good point. So in some instances, the uh, service is more complex than the, uh, the product itself. Yeah, yeah quite. Um, with regards to the point back there, um, how, how often is it uh, beneficial just to provide a product? Well, I, I suspect in, in many instances it is. I mean, it is the, is the general dominant model. Um, if you can get away with providing a product and your competition uh, is quite weak at the time, it's probably the best way to go about it because you, you have to commit less labor. But as competition gets stronger, it seems like the way the strategy seems to be shifting is towards product services because they can provide something over and beyond what just the product suppliers can provide. Um, and just, just one last point, the, a few of you focused on the, the sort of power by hour model. so just providing the function that the, the users need. Um, that's not always the case. Sometimes ownership in itself is a, is a really important thing for the users. So for example, a watch. Do you really just want somebody to tell you the time whenever you need to know the time? Or do you want to own a watch? So in some instances, uh, Ferrari owners, do they just want to drive a Ferrari whenever they want? Or do they want to own a Ferrari? So in some instances, you, you can't deny the fact that people really want to own certain things. Um, go on. Would it then look like a service plan, more or less, if, if uh, for watch, for instance, if we uh, sell the watch and uh, they actually own the watch? Oh, but right, I see, yes. OK, so you, you provide. Well, in fact, actually, it's a very good, good example. A lot, lots of watchmakers make sure that you can't actually get into the back of the watch. I mean, some of them claim it's because of uh, it ruins the waterproofing of the watch. But uh, if you need to go get your battery replaced, you have to go through their services to get it replaced. Uh, I'm a bit dubious of that. I think you could probably design it so that the battery is slightly separate and you could get into it. But um, it's an interesting way they've levered uh, some service uh, from their product. I uh, actually have one quick note as well, <laughs> just to follow up on what you just said. I think the Ferrari case is actually pretty interesting because it's definitely a status symbol. But at the same time, I don't think I could afford a Ferrari. So you could think of a Ferrari as a service. You have these track days, for instance, where people actually yeah. come to the track and try a Ferrari. They wouldn't be able to purchase a Ferrari, but they can try driving a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. So that'll actually, that's actually a way of... Uh, rethinking the business model of a Ferrari. So instead of thinking, okay, we have this customer segment, 
that this essentially uh, only people who have more than, let's say, 10 million kroner on their bank account. Going from that to saying, okay, we actually have a much, much larger segment uh, because, uh, or a much larger market because through selling to, for instance, you know, event managers, organizers, or uh, racing tracks who could invest into these Ferraris, they could actually reach a much larger uh, customer base. So that's okay. one important uh, point. From, okay. from my own uh, experience with my wind turbine, I actually, uh, we're pretty much following this. We're, we're, we're going to sell our wind turbine from the get-go because we need some money in the bank. But we're, we're also looking into different models for using, for instance, product service systems uh, down the road. And what it also enables you to do is something that's very important. It's the same as the Ferrari. Uh, if we have to sell the wind turbine, or let's say 12 wind turbines, or 15 wind turbines, that's going to cost you a lot. So it's not necessarily something that the operational manager at the you know, site where we're putting them up will be able to invest into. On the other hand, if you provide it as a service where we just put up the wind turbines and they sort of pay by the wind hour, uh, then it's a decision that can be made lower in the organization. Mm -hmm. And suddenly we have a lot, of, a lot more decision makers who will be able to essentially purchase our product. Mm -hmm. So things like that is, uh, are, are very imp important to consider as well. That's a good point. Okay, um, I think we'll take, mm, in the next sort of seven minutes or so, if we could have a go at this exercise now, just in your groups, think, choose your, if you've got more than one business idea on the go at the moment, choose your favorite one or just choose one of them and try to think how you'll reconfigure it uh, for three alternative PSS configurations. So if you're selling a product, think about how else you could reconfigure the business so you could sell it as a PSS or provide service on top of it. <laughs> 